Richard, it's Guinea's Week. We're here with Perfect Power. It looks magnificent. How are preparations going? Absolutely fantastic. Um, every, everything we wanted to do. Uh, we've got our trial running. Um, beauty was he won it. Um, and I just feel that would just put him 100%. So we haven't, haven't had to do much with him since. Uh, it was a good trial. It went a good gallop. And, uh, you know, we got blew, blew the cobwebs away. So, uh, no, no, we're, we're, we're very pleased and in a good place. It's about a year ago since he arrived here from the sales at Doncaster. Was he on the, the must-have list that day? Did, did, you, did he stand out to you? Uh, we, we, we liked him a lot. Um, he breathed well. And uh, Richard Brown showed, showed an interest in him that if, if he bought him, uh, he would be coming to us. So uh, when he walked in the ring there, we, we did go in to, to buy him ourselves just in case Richard didn't go. But I knew from Richard that he was definitely going to buy him at any price. So no, it was great. Great to have him. And when did you first know he was as good as he is, or potentially grew at one horse? Uh, to be honest, um, when they come from the breeze, you sort of just steady away there, and, and, and we sort of took him up on the grass here with some of our better horses, and uh, he whizzed past them all there, and I thought, God, this, is, this, this could be special now. Uh, but when you see him do it once, it, uh, you like to see it again. We're greedy trainers, you know, you shouldn't just take it on one, but... And then, of course, he went to Nottingham there and nothing went right and he got beat, uh, which wasn't a disaster. It just meant I, I ran him a week later and he put up a scintillating performance that day. And then we had a trial before Ascot and uh, we were we were very pleased with what we saw now, you know. He won two Group 1s at two, including the middle park at the Rowley Mile. Did you see enough that day to know the course isn't a problem for him on Saturday? <laughs> I'm going to say something extremely strange there, but I didn't think he handled the dip that day, funny enough. I thought it was a huge performance that day. He was drawn uh, in low numbers where they couldn't win. And uh, he's had to come across and come back. He did come down the hill, don't get me wrong. Um, but sprinting down a hill in over a mile will be a different race. So I'm, I, I don't think it'll be a problem, you know. And just looking ahead to Saturday, you've got that green and run under your belt up to a mile. If you watched it without knowing the pedigree in the green, you would have thought it wouldn't be a problem. How confident are you about him getting home? I'm quietly confident, um, but we, we, we're in a classic here. It's, it's the quality of the horse now we're going to be taking on on Saturday will be different than the Greenham. Uh, we're looking at the, probably the well, we are looking at the best horses in Europe. Um, but if he's if if he's there at the for long pole, half a for long pole, I'd be I'd be quite happy to uh, that he'll he'll pick up, you know. And in terms of the ground, it's a real dry spell we're going. Now. I can't see any rain in the forecast. Any concerns on that front? Uh, to be honest, he's he's won in all sorts of ground, soft, heavy, fast. Um, it was a quick enough time, even the other day there, but it was beautiful ground at Newbury. But it looks like uh, Michael Posser seems to be chucking a lot of water on, which you do at Newmarket because it does drain away and, and, and dry up quite quick. But I'm, I'm not going to use the ground as an excuse now, so maybe after the race, but at the moment I'm, I'm quite happy. I promise this is last question, perfect power. What do, what do you think his main asset is, Richard, going into the Classic on Saturday? Uh, Barr is going to the start. He, he's got a great mind. He doesn't worry about anything. Uh, he just sometimes, uh, when he hits the grass, he, he goes from zero to 45 mile an hour in six strides. So we are going to change that. We'll probably take him down early uh, and just get him trotting away down and relaxed. But uh, he's got the attributes of, of, of everything you need in a racehorse. He, he doesn't worry, he relaxes. He sits behind his bridle now, which will help him get, get home. Um, but look, it's a classic and you need, you need a lot of luck. You need a sort of a draw where you can get in among them and get relaxed. But uh, to be honest, since Christophe's been riding him, he's, he, he fills you full of confidence and fills the horse full of confidence. And uh, I'll just leave it to him now. And that, the point is, this is the last one. How important is that Christoph Sumian relationship with us? It just seems to have gelled so quickly. Yeah, it's amazing. Some some jockeys just just find find the key to to, to a horse. And Christoph, from from the first day he rode him, I mean he was he was ranting about him, and he's not a very animated character now. Um, but he, uh, he he rang me, and God, he was he, he says, look, this could be a champion. So let's see what happens.